Shalom, everybody. Rabbi Edelstein here with this week's installment, another last-minute one, I'm afraid, of Rabbi Ian 3, brought to you, as always, by Moor DC. Find us on Facebook. Check out our page. Like it, I hope. And our website, merdc.org. Please be in touch. So it's a rather plain, I won't say drab, background for today's video. I'm in a quiet room in my house. I really should be speaking about this week's Torah portion, Yisro, from the book of Exodus, in a more dramatic setting, like, say, a wilderness, a midbar, like the Sinai Desert, because you guessed it, this week's Torah portion, the giving of the Torah. Our ancestors, B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, received the Torah heard the Ten Commandments from God himself directly in this week's Torah portion. The truth is, you and I were there too, our mystical sages say. So if something triggers a deep subconscious memory of, of Harsinai of Mount Sinai, it's because you and I were there. Maybe we we're, maybe were next to each other. <laughs> no videos back then, but okay. The public revelation of the Ten Commandments, the giving and receiving of the Torah, that's in Parshas Yisro this week. And I want to hammer one great important point home. Our Judaism as a faith, as a tradition, rests on that foundation, unique in all of human history, of a public revelation and a national revelation. Not one prophet, not one inspired person or a group, but a whole nation, men, women, and children, close to two million probably, who had left Egypt with signs and wonders, came to Har Sinai, a humble mountain in the Sinai wilderness, and heard the creator of heaven and earth speak. The Ten Utterances, as they're called, not really called the Ten Commandments. We'll explain why in a second, but that's an important point. Every one of the Jewish people of our ancestors and us heard God speak, became prophets in that experience at Mount Sinai. And then Moshe went up and looked to Mount Sinai and learned to the top and learned the rest of the Torah and taught us the rest of the commandments. So, it's an important Torah portion. Now, we don't call them the Ten Commandments traditionally because we have more than Ten Commandments. And the rabbis didn't want us to think of these as the only ones, God forbid, or even the most important. They are rather the introduction, maybe the root system of all the rest of the commandments. And each one's extremely important. But don't think of them as the Ten Commandments. They're a great start. That's where they're meant to be. We should learn them and study them and live them. But we have 613 commandments. So, but anyway, this Torah portion, read it. Remember it. Live it. I want to share with you, finally, a beautiful insight. I'm sure many other commentators probably say the same thing, but Rav Samson Raphael Hirsch, great German rabbi, points this out. In the order of the Ten Commandments, or the Ten Utterances, there's an order. Now, they encompass every part of a human being. Thought, speech, and physical action. I am the Lord your God who took you out of the land of Egypt. Don't have any other gods. Don't acknowledge or worship any other gods but me. Don't take God's name in vain. Honor and keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother. Those were the first five on one tablet when Moshe brought them down later. Then, second tablet, don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't commit perjury, don't covet what belongs to your neighbor. There's thought, inner life, belief in God. That, that's not an action. It can be expressed in an action, but it's a cognition. It's an awareness. It's a duty of the heart and the mind, as a great later rabbi would say. And so is a prohibition against idolatry in, in, its, in, its, in its inception. But then you have to express these holy thoughts and worldviews into speech. Holy speech. Don't take God's name in vain. Don't commit perjury. And action. Honoring the Sabbath day and honoring your fellow man and honoring your parents. It's not enough to have holy ideas, Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch says beautifully in his commentary. You have to bring those holy ideas, that spirit, into law and action. And on the other side, it's not enough to just have nice, good actions. They have to be rooted in something deeper, in a muna, in faith, of why a human being should be treated properly, because they're created in the image of God. Thought, speech, action. I'm longer than four minutes. Forgive me, but the, the, the partial of the Ten Commandments, you got to forgive me for that. An incredible overview, introduction to our beautiful Torah. May we study it and learn from it and elevate it. We have, hey, one of the ten, uh, and this coming up soon, honoring and keeping Sabbath. Have a wonderful, wonderful Shabbos, a Shabbos that can reinvigorate the, our, and, and, and sanctify our thoughts, our words, and God willing, our actions for the coming week. Have a great Shabbos.